Why does the Vatican have a telescope named Lucifer? It's watching a secret planet they call Planet X. The top secret missions of Pioneer 10 in 1972 and Voyager 1 and 2 1977 were to search for and to triangulate the precise location and trajectory of Planet X. The 10th planet was predestined before time began as a sort of cosmic time stamp for many biblical events. For us, it is the second coming of the Lord. Now, Satan, knowing his time on earth is coming to an end, John 12, 31, in preparation for the second coming, is trying to reduce earth's population to 500,000 to thwart the Lord's plan to bring down salvation from heaven to free and to save billions from the yokes and burdens of men. John 8, 32, Acts 2, verse 40. There are three miracles, and there's soon to be plenty more. The three miracles I'd like to talk about here, proving that the Lord is going to return soon. Now, the ways of God are exceeding abundantly greater than we ever could have imagined, Ephesians 3, 20, and Isaiah 55, verse 9. And the second coming of Christ is about the return of the ways of God. That is, his Bible is one faith from God, Christianity, and his kingdom. And yet, so men could stand up against and murder Christ with our preaching, our Bibles, our faith systems, our moral standards, etc., the Lord hid his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, and his Bible from us. Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29. And for the next 40 years, the Lord's going to show us many miraculous things. Micah 7, 15. According to the days of that coming out of the land of Egypt for 40 years, I will show you marvelous, that is, miraculous things. See, we're going to have to change our minds about miracles because the word of God, God is a supernatural being, and his word is supernatural, and it's miraculous as far as men are concerned. Now consider the following three miracles. The second coming of the Lord is promised after the man of sin is revealed. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 through 7. The Satan has now been identified as the man of sin. Romans 5, 12 through 21. The man of sin who rules over this world with his mega sword, that is, denominationalism, socialism, atheism, every wind of the doctrine of me in Revelation 6, verse 4. Only God could have given to man a strong delusion that free. Only God could have given to humanity a strong delusion. Second Thessalonians 2, 11, that prevented us from being able to distinguish between the supernatural objective truth of God and the lies and pseudoscience of men. For 1,680 years. You see, God wanted us to go through the school of hard knocks. He wanted us. He made us ignorant of good and evil so that we would learn what good and evil was. So that we could get ready for the time when we would overcome Gnosticism. The last days of the kingdoms of me. And so we had to be patient for 1,680 years. While going through the school of hard knocks. For the sake of billions that were yet unborn. That's what the book of Job was about. Patient. And James 5 verse 11. The patience of Job. The second miracle is that with the Bible from God, we can or we soon will be able to understand all biblical prophecies. You see, the supernatural word of God is going to reveal these things to us. They were hidden away. The Bible from God was hidden away. Hidden revelations. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. One word, hidden revelation. The hidden man. The hidden will of the Lord. All these things are now being real. The perfect law of liberty. That's the Bible from God. That he gave to the church. The Holy Spirit through the seven prophets of Asia Minor. He gave to the church once and for all time. That means since the kingdom is eternal. The Bible only had to give, be given to Christians one time. And right now, the Bible is being restored. So when that which is perfect is come, when the Bible is restored for us, 
So when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Kingdoms of men. We can go back to the kingdom of God when the Bible is completed. So other terms we learn from the Bible, from God, is that the last days are the last days of the kingdom of men. <laughs> Anytime you read that in scripture, the last day, remember Joel chapter two, in the last days, the last days of the kingdom of the land. The first century, the last days, Acts chapter 2, 17. We're in the last days of the kingdom of the land. And that's what's happening right now because God's word is being restored. His supernatural objective truth is being restored. These are the last days of the kingdom of the land because men cannot stand up against God's word. And the only time we can have spiritual warfare between the Word of God, God's Bible, and men's Bibles, is for the 40 years that's gradually being given to man. Because the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Men can't stand up to God. So we certainly are going to understand all Bible prophecy. We're going to have to because we're going to need to be ready to have God's perfect moral standard in our hearts and in our minds before the second age of the kingdom comes. That is the second coming of Christ. You see, we're crying out for God's judgment in this modern world, but we need 40 years as well to get ready. Now the third miracle, this is one of already mentioned here, but it has to do with the Vatican and the telescope named Lucifer. And they're watching a secret planet. They call it Planet X. Again, the mission of yeah, so the Pioneer 10, and that's in 1972, and Voyager 1 and 2 in 1977, was to search for and then triangulate the precise location and trajectory of Planet X. You see, you've heard people arguing about Pluto being a planet. Why? Why, why is that an argument? You see, the way the planets line up in our solar system, I think it was Uranus. We always knew another planet came after Uranus, but and so when we discovered this satellite Pluto, which was actually a moon from another planet, we thought that was the answer. That was planet X, so to speak. No. No. Didn't work out. That's why they decided Pluto was not a planet. Planet X, as it's called, was predestined before time began as a sort of cosmic time stamp for many biblical events for, for modern men, that is, the second coming to the many events that can only be answered by a tenth planet in our solar system. The world was destroyed by flood. How can that be possible? Planet X, which is seven times bigger than Earth, it has a long orbit of 332 years. And when it comes to this part of the solar system, it causes great havoc. It's the time of the flood, it drew a meteor, a huge meteor that hit the earth, right in the Gulf of Mexico. That's why you have mountains. You remember the, in Genesis account, you had a land and sea. It's kind of like a billiard ball. There's land and there's water above the waters. You had a Canopy above the water canopy. Doesn't it look like a billiard ball? One continent within this planet comes through our this part of the solar system and it drags a comet and this comet strikes the earth and it destroys everyone except for Adam and his family. So why would God allow that to happen? And see so God predestined us. Predestination for God is kind of like you know, what grandmother might say, if I'd known you were coming, I would have baked the cake. Well, he knew what evil men would do. And he knew the world couldn't sustain evil men that lived to be hundreds of, and maybe thousands of years old at the time. And so he predestined his planet, the dragon comet, to our solar system and strike the earth. And it broke the continent apart. The water canopy 
fell apart. The world flooded. It could have been a, it couldn't have flooded above the mountains, but there were no mountains. The comet hitting made a huge hole in the Gulf of Mexico and it pushed up mountains all around the world and it divided the continents. That's why God, when man came out of the ark, he told him to go separate through this. There's one continent there, but the continental drift shall men be in every part of the earth. And that's why the Tower of Babel was a problem. It's completely against God's wishes to populate the earth. By the way, you read in the Genesis account about different nations of people, and there's no other account anywhere ever in the history of humanity is as good of a description of how the world was populated with men in different nations. It's proof in the Bible, except, of course, we had denominational Bibles and basically me and lied about being able to, to translate and, and give you the meaning of what the Bible was. We're in the kingdoms of men. And the kingdom, kingdoms of men with Satan ruling over it didn't want you to understand about planet X. Didn't want you to understand that God existed. In fact, it's interesting because God allowed a strong delusion. God allowed men to believe anything but the truth to prove ultimately that we need the truth from God. We need God to save us from men. We need the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, mighty God to save us from ourselves. So planet X cast a shadow on the earth at Christ's crucifixion in 30 AD. And the darkness lasted for three hours. Now the moon can cause darkness for seven minutes. But this planet was so huge, and we don't know even how far away it was between us and the sun. It's close enough for three hours you read about earthquakes? Why earthquakes? But Jesus, crucifixion. Because of the gravitational pull of a planet being that close to the earth. Here's something interesting. Orbit, 332 years, and that's going to be average. I mean, the orbit varies because it's, it's not a stable planet. But six cycles or six orbits of this planet. At 332 years apart means the year 2022 is the beginning of the last days of the kingdoms of men, which means Christ's coming is in four years. Now, you may not believe what we said before about the other miracles. You know, God gave man a strong delusion, and he may not be ready for you to believe these other miracles, but you're going to wake up out of your slumber. When you look up in the sky and you see a planet that is shaking the earth, where did I come up with that? You know, I'm no expert on the subject. All, all I simply did is took the time between the last one and this one and divided by six, you get 332 years. Could I be wrong? Of course. Then again, the, the orbits vary. But you look in the world around about us today. What do you think? It's time for the Lord to come. I've already illustrated that God is saying, has warned us that the second coming is near, and that's what that's all this warning does as well. Proves to us that the second coming is near. But we know the second coming is near is near because Satan's been identified as a man of sin. Satan rules over this world with the Bibles and Gnosticism, the the religions of men, fascism, socialism, atheism, everything, all of it. See, all doctrines of men are contrary to the doctrine of God. All faith systems of men are anti-faith system of God. They're against Christ. They're anti-Christ. You know, there are righteous and there are men and women counted as righteous and men and women counted as un unrighteous, but the righteous are saved by grace and not at all by the doctrine of men. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 13 is an important passage where there's no law, there's no sin. In other words, when we didn't have the Bible from God, we were not blaspheming God when we gave our opinions about the Bible. So we accepted in verse 30, the times of ignorance, God went to the overlook. He turned to that to, He hid his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, so that we could try out the ways of men without him having to condemn us eternally. For doing that. He wanted us to go through the school of hard knocks. He wanted us to learn good and evil. So that when we needed it, we would have it. Right now, we ought to be able to identify good and evil. And some of us can. And some of us will in the next 40 years. Except, I highly suspect, when people see, every eye is going to see the Lord. Does that maybe mean his sign that he puts in heaven with this planet and schedule to come by. And so when, you know, Christianity's back and the Bible from God's back well enough to where we can, I think, obey the gospel. But when are we going to have the Pentecost? When are enough people going to believe? Probably when planet X is seen by all men. <laughs> because it's secretly tracked proves that's on the way. Men can't afford. Men, men of the kingdoms of men can't afford it. Satan can't afford for this message to get out. The kingdoms of men can't afford this. They're all about the lives of men and Satan maintaining his power to rule over the kingdoms of men. And Satan's goal, because he knows it's coming. And it's even stated by some of his minions. He wants to reduce the population of the world to 500 million. To spoil the Lord's plan. To bring salvation down from heaven for billions. The book of Revelation is it's a great revealing. What is it revealing? How the kingdom of God is divided up into two ages. So we read about the kingdom in the first century. We read about the kingdoms of men. In fact, Jerusalem was of the kingdoms of men. A sex. You know, in, in Christ's time, there were those that followed the Hebrew Bible and those that Follow the sex of men. The Bible's a men. By the way, the Bible's a men contain apocryphal books, books from men. But men that follow the Bibles of men, they were contrary to the Word of God. In other words, the Gnostic Jews, they taught the word for Elohim was singular. And this is how they murdered Christ. Because they lied about the Bible. And so Revelation is an explanation of the kingdom of God has divided into two ages. And so just as Christians needed to get out of and away from the temple in Jerusalem and Gnostic, the Gnostics are taking it over, they need to get away from it. Why? Because God was going to bring down salvation for 144,000 Jewish Christians. You see, these Gnostic Jews were persecuting Christians. They needed to be saved from this persecution. And so it was just as Christians need to get away from these people that are killing them in the first century and who murdered Christ. It's 40 years later. This is right at the end of the kingdoms of men. They need to get away from them because they're going to go down. We need to get away from those trying to murder us today. Hebrews 10, 25, but you see the day approach and what does that mean? One day to the Lord is as a thousand. I mean, the king, when the kingdom of God comes, the end of the battle, it's going to be the end of the kingdoms of men. You're not going to make it. You don't want to be in their company at that time. For some of them, killed by comets. We read about that. Wrong. Great hailstones. Up weighing 100 pounds. You didn't want to be in Rome later in 96 AD. And it's true, and there's still comets falling on the earth. That's why it was a problem to, to follow the ways of Rome, the socialist pseudoscience of Romans. You don't want to die at Rome when Rome was being destroyed by God. When God allowed comets to fall and destroy these people, and when people were destroying themselves, he sent Gnostic Jerusalem to Gnostic Rome destroy Gnostic Jerusalem. Why? 
For one thing, they murdered Christ. And they were murdering Christians. You see, the ways of men are about death. The day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to die. It's about death and human suffering. It's evil. The ways of God are about life. When you get away from them today, and I'm not going to mention names of modern cities today, but you know of some of them. It's just like the flood. Get on the boat. It's time to close the doors. And get in. How about Sodom and Gomorrah? It's time to get out of there right now. Second like coming of the Lord. In these last days of the kingdoms of men. And you don't want to be around kingdoms of men. Because the kingdom of God is going to break up and consume all the kingdoms of men. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Thank you for watching us today. We have commentaries, paperbacks, hardbacks, zip drives, EPUBs available. I want to share with you the pearl of great price. The question we should all ask is, what is good and evil? Objective moral truth from God is good and subjective moral truths and lies from men are evil. Let God be true and every man a liar. For 1,680 years, the Lord has hidden objective truth in the book of Revelation. This has allowed mankind to test out the subjective moral truths of men. We're starting to come out of the spiritual dark ages and are restoring the perfect law of liberty. www.lulu.com slash spotlight slash time of the son of man.